much for taking the time to meet with us. Um, Thank you. Well, I personally adored the film. Everybody should go see it at the previews this weekend and then when it's out, 20 times at least, I've seen it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just, first of all, fantastic work. Um, and just, first of all, I just wanted to ask what brought you to the story when, and then eventually you guys? Um, so, well, I really wanted to make a feature film that summer. That was probably the first thing. And I was trying to think of ideas that I could do and do practically on, a, on, a, on the budget that we had available to us. And um, I love those kind of adventure movies of, of like teenager movies like, um, like The Goonies and E.T. and all the kind of Spielberg movies and Stand By Me. And um, I got on this journey when I was a kid with my, um, with my buddy and this crazy cycle trip like 80 miles down to West Cork um, where we just got a bag full of beers and tents and ghetto blasters and everything and headed off down to West Cork and um, got into tons of trouble and lots of silly things happened which a lot of we actually put into the film so the stuff that happens to these guys along the way are actually drawn from that. So that was kind of the starting point and then um, I wanted to have them a, a really kind of interesting goal. So that's when we brought in that, that drugs hall, uh, the, um, basically the missing bales that had happened from the drugs hall. I thought it would be really funny to have them go down and try and find one of these bales of cocaine. Brilliant. And, and then how did uh, you get, you? well, obviously. I, I was involved. <laughs> I had I no choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were dragged in. I had no choice. Um, yeah, back in January 2015, Peter came to me and said, look, I've, I've got an idea, um, which always amuses me because when he says that, it just means that there's going to be some, we're going to be doing something crazy for a year. Uh, which we did so he just said look I want to make a film and um, pitched it to me and I was like yeah absolutely of course you know let's let's go make it and then we got Julie Ryan our producer on board as well who's amazing and uh, yeah we just started the process at that point and um, eventually PJ came to the party <laughs> yeah eventually yeah uh, I was but as soon as I heard about it I wanted to be a part of it because Peter sent me like a seven minute teaser video and literally as soon as I saw it, I really wanted to be involved. So it was kind of like, I've never been on Tinder, but I imagine it's that feeling when you get a match with someone that's amazing. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, you're flicking through job Tinder. Uh, and every so often one comes to you and it's like, would you like to be in a show called Handcuffed to a Pig? No. <laughs> uh, and then the Young Offenders came. And I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I really want to be a part of this. So when I went for the audition, it was probably the most nervous I've been in a long time because I knew I wanted it. Uh, and I came in very, very late, so I, I could see quite a lot of footage before I got involved. Uh, so that's how I got involved. I don't know why he really rang me at all, but you know, we're dating, it's going well. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Hillary what? doesn't seem to mind. Uh. A little bit of uh, the, 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 the baddie is the Dubliner. Is that a coincidence, I, I think? I don't think that's a coincidence. <laughs> like no. he says, no villains in Cork, so. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've been a big, I've, I've, I think PJ's been modest here. I've been a big fan of his for a long time, so it's just. Um, we wanted to get enough shot that we could show so people could actually get an interest and like his reaction was exactly what we were looking for. Someone who just go, this is great, I'd love to be involved. So um, yeah, it was just very exciting from then on. Yeah, and the hair grew back eventually. Was that a creative choice on your part? Or? It was a, a, it's almost a throwaway comment or yeah. a conversation on set. Like we were on set and we were talking about the character and, and Peter's really thorough. So like he, like in fairness, it was great because he made you think, you know, who is the character? Where does he come from? What's he look like to you? So like, right. Uh, wouldn't it be great if he had his head shaved? Total, like, it's too late, so you can say anything you want. And then you realise it's never too late, so uh, there's no hairdresser on set. So Peter realises the catering person used to be a hairdresser, still has access to hairdressing tools, and ten minutes later I've got a bald patch for the next week in my life. <laughs> uh, and what I keep telling people is I'm walking around Cork like, with a bald patch, and uh, Hillary gave me a hat to cover it up, which actually made me look worse. <laughs> Uh, it, was a, it was the only hat I had. <laughs> like, okay. I have no idea why you'd even buy a hat like that. It was like the I think worst. It was given to me. I don't yeah. even Those know. hats that they give people uh, so that they stand out for being lunatics that you don't associate with. You know, <laughs> if this wear this hat so nobody sits beside you on a bus, one of those hats. So yeah. I didn't look great for a couple of weeks, but I did have a good time. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I, I know um, it started off on, on a bit of a shoestring and then gathered momentum from there. So how did you guys wrangle that? Like what? You didn't kind of like go in search of loads and loads of funding, but it, it looks so polished. Yes. Selling all the cocaine, I presume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we started off with, um, there's Michael Doherty who has FICA Films with me. There's myself and Cormac Fox and Michael Doherty have the company. And I spoke to Michael about it and said, look, um, will you match what I'm putting in to begin with? And let's see how far we can take this out. Basically, our goal was to get it in the can for 50K, and um, which we managed to do and uh, half of which actually went on catering. That's basically, we just fed everybody a lot of really good food and that's, um, and that, that lady was a hairdresser, did some fantastic food for us actually. Amazing, <laughs> amazing food. Amazing food. But, um, well yeah. worth 25 grand. Yeah. So that, that, that seven minute promo, that, 
that, that seven minute promo we have actually did a lot of a lot of good for us. Not only did they get the PJ on board, but also we brought that to Wildcard Distribution and Patrick from there watched it and he immediately um, almost he said, Look, I'll need to see the rest of it, but if it's the rest of it's like this, I'm in and let's try and do a release of this film. And he also spoke then to the film board and Rory Gilmartin then uh, from the film board came on and supported it. So we basically got another uh, we got money from them to finish it off and so basically it all just came together quite nicely after that. And I must say, there's a fantastic rapport with the actors on the set, like especially with you and Connor and, and the, the character of Connor. And I'm just wondering, how did, was there much rehearsal time leading up to that? How did you guys build that? Yeah, Peter was pretty insistent that we do a lot of rehearsals, which was great. And it's kind of unheard of for a low budget feature as well, you know. Um, so we did, like I think the lads reminded me yesterday that I actually took them on shopping trips and bought their costumes for them. So it was like, <laughs> like a mummy and son outings. Uh, with the two lads around town so we just hung out and, and did fun things um, and that kind of like that way we built our relationships and built uh, the chemistry that I, I guess kind of resulted on screen you know so we were lucky that we were able to do it yeah because we wrote like the film was kind of written we really actually hate each other but no, <laughs> no we're really good at covering it it's because we were, because we the film got written so quickly we decided to make it in January and we knew we were going to be filming in May so we needed to to cast as it was getting written. So after we got the first act, we actually managed to start, we started doing the casting. So we were actually rehearsing, I think, for two to three months before we even started filming, you know, bringing in people. And we had the Cork Film Centre, the space there in Cork where we just went in every day. And even when PJ came on board, like even the smaller scenes, like we spent ages rehearsing that scene. Yeah, we spent a lot of time rehearsing. And, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just, uh, there was really helpful for even doing those smaller scenes just to rehearse, just to find out who the character is, you know, mm. uh, and just to get it into your head. So when you arrive and it gets to the, stage where you're doing improv scenes you really have a sense of direction with where Peter wants it to go so it was yeah. great you know you can bounce off the other actors like Fanula and scenes like you can basically mm. you can the guys know each other well enough that they can trust each other and lead each other and help as well within the scenes you know how was it recruiting people to help you with this along the way when you didn't have a huge budget well but obviously the script helped but yeah, and yeah. so um, obviously, um, I spoke to Hillary, and she was uh, um, like the idea of the story. And, and Julie Ryan, obviously, was integral, who, who who produced the film with me. And so once I had Julie on board, then I went to it's actually crewing it was the main thing. Paddy Jordan was my cinematographer. My seven Paddy had shot the Wild Atlantic Way kind of uh, videos um, before, so we'd kind of done that route, and we knew how to shoot it quite well. Um, on a quite a small crew, and I basically myself and Paddy love working together. So I said, look, I've got this project. It's and um, th this is the, the pitch for it. So Paddy came on board at that point. It was basically just crewing up people. I said, look, I'll write it if I have a crew to make it with it. And then, so once we had that core crew, uh, and then Danny Crowley came on from sound. It's, it's a lot of like, it's also, we had to, to crew by location as well. Like Danny was from Cork, and I had a feeling that he'd like to spend the summer back at home. So he decided, look, I'd love to come on board as well. So once I had that crew, um, then you knew you could make a film. You know, you've got your, you've got a great sound recordist, great DOP and a producer and, 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 and cast. You feel, okay, look, we can, we can now start doing it and mm. hopefully it will just all come together, you know? And the final scene, the final action scene, like that's fantastic. How has that worked out logistically <laughs> or even written? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was full on on the day. Uh, mm. Basically what, what, what actually happened in that scene was we, we had a limited amount of time in the kitchen to do that and we had bit, like basically we were, we were shooting with the way we picked locations we said like is there enough windows do we have enough light coming in here because we don't have we didn't have crew to, to, to set up lights we only used a, a couple leds for fill and stuff like that so this was our one big spend because we knew it was a big slow motion scene that we're gonna need a lot of light so we got a, a big hmi light down for the day and um, ready to do the scene and we were blocking it out and working out where all the angles were going to be and there's lots of lots of stunts and like Hillary was like seven months pregnant and she was going to have to do some action scenes and mm -hmm. fighting scenes and and there's a nail gun in the scene and there's knives so it's basically we had to choreograph it quite a lot you know and then the light just died oh no <laughs> so we yeah. were just sitting there we had an hour and a half to go to shoot that whole scene um, in an hour and a half and we literally just said that we had no other option I just shout out Paddy he says let's just get every light that's in the house so we literally got every standing light like and just started pointing it all that direction and open all the windows and just shot it and turned up the gain in the camera and like what's great about it is that not one person has noticed like literally that no one said oh you didn't light that right you know we're just going that's amazing what you can do with just household lights <laughs> <laughs> a couple of iPhones yeah. and finally one final question for everybody highlights and lowlights what was the best thing and the worst thing about you you go first, PJ. <laughs> highlights and lowlights. I mean, highlight for me was genuinely. Uh, oh no, I don't. Lowlights is a tough. Oh yeah, I know. Lowlights was highlight for me was getting the gig in the first place because I genuinely knew 
I had a real feeling that something good was going to happen with it. So it didn't really catch me by surprise as maybe people who were on the ground level. Like I'd come in when I really had a feeling it was going to go somewhere. So when I got accepted for the role, I, that was huge. Uh, the low light was the first day in Philbin when I realised I had to lie in cow poop for six hours. <laughs> Uh, which really took me by you surprise. Were really, you were really good at it, though. Because <laughs> <laughs> we filmed in this castle uh, where I, it's my first scene, and I'm like, I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. I've never been in a movie before. Uh, I can't wait to get on set. I've got a costume. <laughs> They've just shaved my head. So, okay, I look a little bit ridiculous. That's as bad as it's going to get. Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, so we went into one castle. That seems... Where cows used to hang out. Cows used to hang out. <laughs> and I had to lie and get dragged through cow poop for about six hours. So that was a low light. But, you know, wow. not so bad that I got to keep the cow poop on the costume for the rest of the week, which was nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Con con continuity was consistent anyway. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Um, highlight catering. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no. the yeah, yeah, no, it was Lish, the whole, yeah. Lish, yeah, Lish, were, that was the catering company, they were brilliant, uh, everything was a highlight, it was just such, it was like genuinely a real pleasure to shoot it and like I was just really proud of Peter that he was getting to do his project, oh, so you. every day was a highlight for me watching how it would progress, um, yeah, I think so, I can't remember any, I think um, mine would be, I think, that the scene we just talked about with that light going off like when we got yeah, that, that in the can because it was it was so stressful that day mm. it was like because if we didn't get that we didn't have a film like i just didn't know what we were going to do because yeah, so many things yeah. like pj was gone hillary was seven months pregnant like it's like there's i was like going do we have to wait till she's like had the baby how are we going to shoot the scene if we don't get this you know like, i, I ge genuinely didn't know like how yeah. we were going to pull all this off yeah. and the the fact that we just shot it and wrapped and we all stopped and we had like five minutes to spare and, and everyone goes okay what else do we need to get and i went I think we got it. Like that was yeah. like after that, yeah, that it was was such a relief. And low light the, 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 the lowest moment I think was shooting the scene up at Tree Castle Head, you know, the castle there, where the two guys are outside by the lake and the first time we shot that the the storms came in and the rain came in and we had our whole crew down there and that was a if expensive day for us to get down and the rain just came in sideways and we shot it anyway because we were down there but like I'd say the younger cast probably didn't realise, but me and Paddy definitely knew we were coming back, you know, and that was that was tough enough. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. That is fantastic. Thank Everyone you. go see the young offenders. You won't be sorry. Mm. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Cheers. Thanks.